Welcome to the Known Victory Church YouTube channel. We are so glad that you found us today. We exist to make Jesus known and to be a place that anyone can call home. If you haven't yet, make sure to subscribe, like, and share these messages so we can truly make Jesus known in our homes, cities, and across the world. We pray that this message impacts you and helps you to grow closer to Jesus. And I'm so excited again to be here uh, for, for church today. And it's Christmas time, right? If you haven't noticed yet, we've had Christmas music since like September 13th, right? Like we've had Christmas music going in stores and malls. Like, like I saw this post the other day. It's like, this guy's like, I'm not a Grinch, but I worked in a grocery store for 10 years. I hate Christmas music, okay? So I don't know what, what, what your story is. But man, Christmas is here and it's an exciting time of year. And we get to, you know, celebrate community. We get to celebrate family. We get to celebrate the birth of Jesus, you know, here uh, on earth. And so we're, we're going to be starting a new series uh, today. And we're, this series is called The Blank That Stole Christmas, right? There's some things, and I'm sure you've seen, seen the movies. Maybe you've read the books, but you've, maybe you've seen it, The Grinch Who Stole Christmas, right? Maybe you've read that, you've seen it, I'm sure you have. We've all seen it probably too many times, right? Different versions of it. But if you don't know the story, it's the story of this grumpy old Grinch who lives on Mount Crump. Welcome back. <laughs> this is it's like, you talk about the Grinch, we're done, you know? Uh, but it's a story, this, this, this grumpy Grinch, right? And he lives on Mount Crump, and he hates Christmas, and he especially hates when his neighbors in Whoville, right, they have extravagant Eat, uh, it's Christmas celebrations. Maybe Easter too, I'm not sure, but Christmas, sure. They have these elaborate, you know, Christmas celebrations. And one day, he's so fed up, so he devises this plan, right, to cancel Christmas. He goes and he's like, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to disguise myself as Santa Claus. I'm going to go to Whoville and I'm going to steal Christmas. So he goes, he gets his suit, he gets his dog, and they go. They start stealing everything. They get the presents. They, 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 they get the trees. They get the decorations. They even get the roast beast, right? They get it all. They steal everything, and he, he's so excited that he finally, you know, steals Christmas, and he thinks this is going to solve the problem, but once his mission is over, he, he has his sleigh filled with Christmas, yet he hears the people in Whoville, they're singing. They're still celebrating Christmas, even though they don't have the stuff, Christmas wasn't stolen, and this is what the Grinch realizes in this moment, and if, there's this famous quote from the Grinch, and this is what it says. And maybe you know this. It says, and the Grinch, with his Grinch feet ice cold in the snow, stood puzzling and puzzling. How could it be so? It came without ribbons. It came without tags. It came without packages, boxes, or bags. And he puzzled and puzzled till his puzzler was sore. Then the Grinch thought of something he hadn't before. What if Christmas, he thought, doesn't come from a store, but what if Christmas perhaps means a little bit more? Right? You remember that? It's, a, it's this powerful moment when I was a child, right? And maybe it's still a powerful moment for you, but, but it's interesting that the Grinch, his entire mission was to steal Christmas, and he failed. And he failed, why? Because he didn't understand the point. And I think for us, you know, those of us who follow Jesus, we know the point. You know, the point is not about the presence. It's not about the decorations. It's about Jesus coming to earth, the joy that came when Jesus entered the human story. That Christmas all those years ago, and that's what we know Christmas is about. It's about community, right? It's about joy and the peace that Jesus carries wherever he goes. But how many of us know when it comes to Christmas, there's a lot of things that try and steal Christmas. There's a lot of things that try and steal our joy. There's a lot of things that try and steal our peace. There's a lot of things that try and steal our money, right? You know what I'm talking about? It's like, I want this for Christmas. Well, it costs a lot of money, man. We can't afford that, you know, like, like go to the Lego store. It's insane. I went to the Lego store the other day. It took me, honestly, I'm not joking, probably 30 minutes to park at West Edmonton Mall. The Lego store lines were like 15 minutes long, and this was like three weeks ago. This was before, like Black Friday, like it was insane. And Christmas comes, and things try and steal Christmas, our spirit, when it comes to Christmas. And there's a lot of things. And I just want to, you know, read off some of the ones that, that maybe I think of, and maybe you have different ones in your life, but how many you know sometimes our schedule tries to steal Christmas? Or sometimes stuff, like the things that we have, materialism, right, it comes and it tries to steal our spirit because there's so much stress because we, we spend so much more money than we should at Christmas time, always. You know how many you know, even, again, like money, but grief will steal our Christmas? 
There's so many things in our life that, that, that cause us so much grief. It's not just a losing somebody, which is often what we think of, but there's so, so many things that come and cause grief around the Christmas season. You know, in drama, how many of y'all have family drama around Christmas time? Oh my goodness. It's like, you might have the least traumatic family and all of a sudden it's December 1st and it's like your family becomes absolutely insane. You know what I'm talking about? It's like, this, anyway, we're gonna get into that later, okay? And again, even like the horrible Christmas music that we hear playing in October and September and August and July, it seems to get earlier and earlier, right? You know, cold weather, right? You know how many times cold weather tries to steal our Christmas? It's like, it's so funny because I have friends in the United States across the world, right? And they're like, I just want to have one white Christmas. And I'm like, I don't think you do. It's not as good as you think it is. So is cool to look at. And maybe if you're wearing the right clothing, it's fun to be in. But good luck starting your car when it's minus 45. It might not even go. You might end up looking like you might turn into a snowman in your car. Like that's the reality of you know, cold weather at Christmas time. And that tries to steal. And sometimes, so, sometimes sickness tries to come and steal our Christmas. Or tiredness tries to come steal our, our Christmas. And there's so many things that come that try and steal our Christmas. And we have to realize that we cannot allow these things to steal our Christmas because Christmas, if we go down to the bottom line, is about Jesus. It's about him. And you got to remember, like, we're living on this side of his birth, right, where we know the stories. You go back, this is what people have been waiting for, for centuries. We get to live in the beauty of now, but they were waiting for this, for so long, and it's so interesting because even though they were waiting for it, so many of them missed Jesus. They missed it. They missed the point of, of what Jesus was about. They, tried, they killed him, actually. This beauty, they, 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 they took him to a cross and killed him. And We can't allow these things to steal our Christmas. So we're going to be going through some of these things over the next you know, few weeks together. And I really hope and pray that, that as we go through these things to try and steal Christmas, I pray that we can learn and we can grow and we can learn how to combat some of these things in our lives, that we can get to the end of this season not exhausted and still have money in our bank account, right? You know what I'm talking about? And we can have joy and peace during the season. That's what we're gonna talk about today. And so today's gonna be a little bit unique. Uh, so I'm gonna invite out Pastor Beth. She became a pastor like two weeks ago. Invite out Pastor Beth. If you're new, you might not know, this is, this is Beth. This is my wife, my beautiful wife. And she, uh, we're having another baby. Yeah. yeah it's, like, it's like, oh. <laughs> Do not say anything more, okay? I'm talking to myself, all right? Like, there's so many things I shouldn't, anyway. Whew. This is Beth. She's my wife, and, you know, we've been married for quite some years now. <laughs> How many? Eight. Nailed it. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to preach together. And to be honest, we've, like, ne like, we've never really done this before. So this is like, you know what, like I always say as leaders, like we need to try, and if it, we fail, that's a good thing. So, but it's going to be good. I'm telling you it's going to be good. I'm just joking, by the way. This is going to be amazing. And we're going to talk this message, the schedule that stole Christmas. That's what we're going to be talking about today, the schedule that stole Christmas. And I think for all of us, you know, Christmas has become our, one of our busiest times of year, right? We have staff Christmas parties. We have kids Christmas parties. We have school plays. We have school Christmas parties. We have to shovel our snow. We have to cook a massive turkey. We have, there's so many things that come up, you know, shopping, waiting in line at Costco. Like there's so many things that come up that make it so busy during Christmas. Again, family gatherings and meal preparation and trying out the new gifts that we got on Christmas, right? Like we want to make sure it works. I remember I got a gift one time the night before Christmas, a video game. And I was like, dad, I want to play. He's like, no. I'm like, then why'd you give it to me the night before, man? You know, I was frustrated. So Christmas is like about trying your new stuff. But, and so we have so kind of three things that we want to go through today that I think will maybe help us when it comes to uh, our schedule this Christmas season. I think they'll help us combat these things. And number one is this Christmas is don't be in a hurry. Don't be in a hurry. And how many times when Christmas comes do we rush around, right? From one thing to the next. From one mall to the next. From one grocery store trying to find the turkey that doesn't exist to the next. 
right? We were rushing everywhere, trying to get our kids ready for school and then getting them ready so we can get to our Christmas party. Like, we're rushing to everything. And hurry has this ability to destroy beautiful moments because our minds are already on the next thing. Right? What hurry does is it actually sets us up for failure because when we're in a hurry, we're missing out on right now because we're always focused on what's next. So we forget to enjoy our family, maybe our morning Christmas as a family, whatever your traditions are, because we're so focused on getting the meal ready that we don't actually have time to enjoy the presence of our family that day. And we're rushing. And that's what, that's what hurry has the ability to. For hurrying to the next thing, we're never enjoying anything because it's always on what's next. And this can be very challenging for me because I'm a planner. Like, I, I like to plan. I like to know what's happening. I like to know what the future is going to look like. Like, I love to think about the future and live in the future. I get excited about the future that so many times I forget to live in the moment now. And this is what I do. And it's so interesting. Like, I have our, 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 our like, messages planned out until the end of August of next year already. I know. And some people look at me like, whoa, right? And other people are like, just that like some people, it's like, anyway, that's just me. Like I like to think ahead and of course I'm, you know, open to things changing. But, but this is hard for me because I'm always rushing to the next thing. And, and the Bible has many war warnings, especially in Proverbs, uh, using this word haste. And which means excessive speed or urgency of movement or, or action is hurry, right? Haste. And it's interesting because when you read through these, most of the time it's about, when it comes to haste, it's about money, Talking about we're trying to rush to get money, and oftentimes that's what we even do at Christmas time. We're trying to do whatever we can to, to, to make sure we can pay for the things we have to buy, and we're rushing, and we're hurrying. And so Proverbs has a lot of warnings when it comes to haste, and when it comes to trying to always be in a rush. Microphone uh, problems here. Um, but Proverbs 19 verse 2 says this, Enthusiasm without knowledge is no good. Haste makes mistakes. It's so funny, I read Proverbs and I'm like, I'm like, wow, I need to get better. You know what I mean? Like I read through these. Enthusiasm without knowledge is no good. Haste makes mistakes. When we're always in a hurry, we're not gonna actually accomplish much because we're always trying to get things done fast so we can get to the next thing. So we're missing out on the moments, right? Like we talked about in you know, Proverbs 21 verse five says this, good planning and hard work lead to prosperity, but hasty shortcuts lead to poverty. You know, which at Christmas especially, how many times do we try and take the shortcuts? I remember one time my, my, my brother wanted Barney for Christmas, right? But yeah, you all remember Barney. I'm so glad Barney's like a thing of the past, you know? It's like in our history books. But my mom bought this Barney for my brother. And he looks at it, he goes, that's not Barney. Because she had bought like the Walmart brand, you know what I'm talking about? The fake Barney. And so hasty shortcuts, mom. You know, I'm just, I'm just kidding. Hasty shortcuts lead to poverty. And when it comes to being in a hurry, we need to realize that this is what can happen. In Proverbs 28, verse 20, it says this. The trustworthy person will get a rich reward, but a person who wants quick riches will get into trouble. Will get into trouble, right? And then Proverbs 13, 11 says this. Wealth gained hastily will dwindle, but whoever gathers little by little will increase it. Now, this is some of the warnings when it comes to being in a hurry. To, to try and build, our, build ourselves really, really fast or to get things done as quick as we can and to try and get through seasons as quickly as we can. This is some of the warnings that come. And, and maybe you've heard some of these sayings before, especially when it comes to finances, is time is money. Have you ever heard that? Right? And then this one, I'll rest when I'm dead. You ever heard that? It's like, that's going to happen a lot sooner than you think, bro. You know? These are the things when it comes to haste that, that, that will lead us to when we're constantly in a hurry. What, this is what Proverbs says, that always looking for the lastest way or, or the fastest way or always being in a hurry, this is what it will do. It will lead to mistakes. It will lead to poverty. And it's not just talking about financial. I think this is also talking about like relationally. If we're constantly in, in a hurry, we're never going to have deep relationships because, again, we're always trying to get to the next meeting or whatever it is and it uh, leads to trouble. Haste leads to trouble. And haste leans, leads to a dwindling. And in our society, we think that busyness equates to being successful. Well, we think that the busier I am, the more successful I will be, the more productive I will be if I'm busy. But how many know, there's a lot of things we could be busy doing that are not good. 
And Christmas, there's a lot of things that come up at Christmas time that we get busy doing that do not make a matter in anything. They do not matter in anything. There's a lot of things that come up. And I, I've heard people say, it's still working. It's going to be hilarious. <laughs> but I've heard people say this, and maybe you've said this, and I've said this before. I'm so busy, right? You ever hear somebody say, I'm so busy, and then they're, they go on to list their favorite TV shows, TV shows they binge watched over the past month? It's like, have you seen this, 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 and this show? I'm like, <laughs> I wish. You know, like, like I wish I, I could create space in my schedule for that. But we get busy doing the wrong things. It does not lead to success, and it does not lead to prosperity. It doesn't, it, it doesn't make a difference. Right? If we go back to that proverb, right, it says, enthusiasm without knowledge is no good. Haste makes mistakes. And so we need to stop trying to be in a hurry all the time. And we need to realize busyness doesn't necessarily mean anything good. Just because you're busy at Christmas time does not mean that you're actually adding or benefiting from it. It does not mean that you're actually growing your relationships when you are in the space of constantly being busy. If you hurry this Christmas, be in a hurry to spend time with your family. If you want to be in a hurry this Christmas, be in a hurry to celebrate Jesus this Christmas. If we want to be in a hurry this Christmas season, it's not about the packages, boxes, and bags. It's not about the roast beast. It's about relationships. It's about family. It's about Jesus. And we need to hurry to him rather than hurry to everything else that tries to distract us from the true meaning of what Jesus did that day. The beauty of who he is and what we do and and our takeaway, we're going to do a takeaway per point today. It's, it's, it's insane. But this is the, the takeaway today is this. Don't let hurry be the altar you sacrifice your Christmas on. Because oftentimes that's what happens. We sacrifice our family. We sacrifice our joy. We sacrifice our peace. Why? On the altar of hurry and busyness. This Christmas, don't be in a hurry. You're in. Here, you take this one. <laughs> All right. Well, so I think one of the things that we, you know, need to address when we're talking about hurry, there are going to be people in this room who are going to be on the opposite side of the spectrum. And I, unfortunately, though my husband is always planned and hurried and all of these things, I am on the opposite side where if I could put my feet up the last day of work and keep my slippers on and stay in my pajamas and stay home for two weeks straight, uh, I would do it because <laughs> I am a homebody and that sounds like an amazing time, right? But unfortunately, that is really not uh, the world that we live in right now, right? If we want to have connection with people, with our families, if we want to experience uh, life in general, we cannot just sit at home and not do anything, even though it's really tempting yeah. to me. I know that there are probably people in this room who are in a similar boat. Unfortunately, like I said, you end up marrying the person who's the complete opposite and trying to find some sort okay. of balance. And this has been a real struggle for us in the past, right? Whereas, you know, we're, we're on one side, we're constantly hurry, go, go, go. Then on the other side, there's always one person that's like, I'm exhausted. We can't keep doing this. You can't do this to me. We need to stay home. And, and it, just, it just melts down into a big ball of chaos. Um, and so one thing that we really wanted to talk about today is this concept of planning for peace plan for peace. I know that sometimes we want to, you know, run ahead and, and do everything, or that just sounds like so, so, so much chaos, and we really just want to stay home, and we don't want to do anything, but we need to plan. Whatever we do, we need to plan for peace, and so practically today, I, I really love practical steps because that's me as a person. I find it calms a lot of anxiety in me when I have practical steps that I'm, that I can follow, so we're just going to go through a couple. And so the first one that I have is just evaluate. Number one, evaluate. So what do I need? 
and take a few minutes to think about this at a really unhurried and peaceful place. Um, what do I need? What do I need this season? Do I need to stay home for two weeks straight? That might be the truth, but it might not be. And if you actually haven't thought about it, sometimes it just ends up being that we don't actually know what we need. And so we're getting so caught up and we're saying like, I just, oh, I don't know what to do. And, and that's often me. And so if I can get ahead and say, what do I need right now? What does the next couple of weeks need to look like for me? And, and taking time in, in that peaceful place and saying, okay, I can think about it. I'm going to make a plan. We also need to evaluate with the people in our lives. So it can't just revolve around us and what we need. We also have family, right? We, we often have family that has to play into this. And so especially if you have a spouse, um, what does your spouse need? What does your spouse need this season? You know, it's, it's one thing for me to need to stay home, but if they need to get out, then we're going to have to find a balance, right? We're going to have to find something that works for both of us. Um, and so bring your spouse into that conversation with you. Bring your family. If you have kids at home, bring them into that conversation. If you have um, even just maybe you live with a family member or if you have family expectations on you, bring them into consideration too. Bring them into that conversation. Um, ex expectations, honestly, are usually one of the things that gets us into the most trouble is unmet expectations. And when the Christmas season is over, we need to ask ourselves, are there going to be any unfulfilled expectations that we should talk about right now? Right. What am I expecting from this? And what are you expecting? And how can we meet in the middle? And how can we make sure that we stay on the same page through the season? And like I said, if you have kids at home, you're going to need to factor them into this conversation too. Maybe not actually talking to them, but taking time over this season to watch. Watch their behaviors and listen to what they're communicating. We have a two-year-old at home, and she can't often say, I'm exhausted, I want to go home. What she does do is throw herself on the floor and scream. That's, that's it. That's <laughs> um, and so what are we learning from behaviors from the people around us? And this actually goes much further than just two-year-olds. This can go into our family. This can go into our spouse. What behaviors are we seeing that might be telling us something, even in ourselves? What are these behaviors telling us about ourselves? So the first one is evaluate. The next one is make a plan. Schedule activities that will restore you in what you need, mentally, physically, emotionally, spiritually. What does that look like for you? For me, this often looks like reading a book. It looks like puzzles and crafts and Christmas movies and things like that. But maybe you're not that type of person. Maybe you need to get out. Maybe you need to go skating or sledding if the weather permits or grab a coffee with a, a friend or a family member or enter into community with somebody, spend time with somebody, and that's what's going to refuel you. Or maybe taking extra time in your daily devotions or prayer time playing worship music in the car or the house or, or listening to a podcast. Maybe those are the things that refuel you. But whatever it is, right. schedule those things. Say, I will prioritize what fills me this season, what fills my family over just doing the things, like Pastor Dustin was saying, that are just busy and filling the schedule and let's go. What are you going to prioritize? Those things that really won't have a lasting effect or the things that will kind of get you to that place where you are able to enter in to the season from a healthy place. Right. So schedule your breaks, schedule your rest. The next thing I have is be flexible, please. <laughs> I am really bad at this. Terrible, in fact. Um, I make a plan, and I will stick to that plan. Um, but things come up, like Pastor Dustin was saying, that we really don't expect extra dinners, events, crowded grocery stores, because somehow, even though we got everything else, we did not get cranberry sauce, yeah, and we need to it. go get that. And if you have yourself or, or your household, you know that colds and flus just creep in and then that's it. There's nothing you can do about it. Yeah. Or early mornings and late nights that affect us emotionally more than they probably should. Yeah. And, and so many other things. 
What are you doing? How, how can you be flexible in this season? And, and it's just being real with where we're at and saying, okay, so maybe I just need to cancel this, or maybe I need to shift in a little bit of extra time in here to make sure that my needs and my family's needs are being met. And that kind of leads into the next, which is checking in. Check in with how you're feeling. Check in with, with how your family is doing. Because it's really easy to just blow through the Christmas season yeah. and get to the end and be like, okay, now we need three or four days just to like recover. But we're actually just headed back to work now and we're headed into the next semester of school and we're headed, you know, and, and it's really easy to just start then after Christmas from a place of complete depletion, right? Yeah. And so we want to check in and make sure that all through the season we're saying, how are we doing? Are we, are, we, are we doing okay? How is everybody? How is everybody feeling? And the last thing I need you guys to do is prioritize peace. Right. More than anything else, prioritize peace. Is your current pace bringing you and your family and your friends and your loved ones peace? Right. For me, it's easy to get overwhelmed and start shutting things down very quickly and lose my joy. I tend to let peace drift further and further away and completely disappear before I'm like, oh no, oh no, it's gone. What has happened here? What can I do? But if I had just been honest with myself earlier on and saying, I actually feel my peace slipping away and we need to do something about this now. Um, it's been hard for me to even recognize that it's slipping away until it's way, way too late. But I have one big piece of, of advice for you or, or, or a nugget of truth, and that is that Jesus is peace. That's it. When we spend time with him, we're aligning our hearts and our desires yeah. with him, what he desires for us. And a verse that um, I've really been meditating on a lot recently in seasons where I feel like I'm just going, 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 and there's no end, and, and I can't keep up, and, and even, you know, if I take time to rest, then what am I going to fall behind on? And then I'm going to have to work extra hard to catch back up, and, and a lot of anxiety and things like that, and, and that's Matthew 11, 28 to 30, and, and this is a very well-known verse, very common, but it says, then Jesus said, come to me, all of you who are weary and carry heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. Let me teach you because I'm humble and gentle at heart and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy to bear and the burden I give you is light. Right. So we need to learn that from, from Jesus to, to take our eyes off the clutter and the chaos of the season and take up that burden that he has for us. I know that sounds counterproductive, right? We're, we're laying down one burden and picking up another, but the truth of the matter is, is that his burden is lighter than the one that we carry. Right. His burden is easier. His yoke is easier than the one that we try to carry day after day after day. He says it. When we take up his yoke, we are going to find rest. I want to carry that burden. I really do. A lot of the times, the burdens that I am carrying leave me so exhausted and so drained. And I want to carry a burden that actually fills me, that actually gives me what I need in this season. And so ultimately, his burden is rest for our souls. For me, the Christmas season brings up a lot of anxiety as soon as we get into December, if not before, because I'm constantly running in my head thinking, what am I going to do? How am I going to balance this all? And it's a lot easier to approach busy seasons when we start from a place of rest and peace, spending time with Jesus, saying, Lord, I, I want what you have for me. I, I, I don't want to run ahead and, and pick up all these anxieties. I, I want your burden. And the closer that we get to Jesus, the more that we understand his desire for us, his heart for us. And so in the midst of the busyness, we're going to take those steps, right, that I was talking about. And, and when we do our check-in, we're going to say, how is my relationship with Jesus doing right now? What is my connection with him like? Do I feel like I'm close to Jesus or does he feel really, really, really far? And the truth of the matter is, is that even if he feels far, all it takes is us to just knock and he's going to open that door for us, right? But we have to knock. We have to 
take, take the time to really enter into that space because he's there with us. But a lot of the time we don't recognize that. And so what do you have to do this season in order to recognize where Jesus is, what he has for you? And, and that is about spending time with him. And so our takeaway for this point is planning for peace looks like spending time with Jesus. So good. Yeah, that was so good. Yeah, I'll take this mic. I'm getting a little reverby, which is awesome. It makes me sound so, like, angelic, you know? <laughs> so anyway, our first point to that uh, was don't be in a hurry. Number two is plan for peace. And the last one, have fun. If you want to overcome your schedule, enjoy it. Like, don't see, don't see what you have to go to as a burden. See it as a place to actually have fun. You know, in, in the Bible, joy is mentioned 430 times. Yeah, 430 times. I Googled it, okay? <laughs> yeah, exactly. I read the whole Bible this week and just highlighted every time it says joy. Yeah, right. I, that, that's a challenge now, you know. Anyway, but oftentimes at Christmas, you know what happens? We get so busy. We get to the end. We get to December 27th. And we think, I'm exhausted, and that sucked, right? Like, you know what I mean? Like, that was horrible. And we need to actually enjoy Christmas. And how do we do it? Obviously, we celebrate Jesus. We celebrate community and, 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 and enjoy the moments that come. You know, and in Luke chapter 2, verse 8 to 12, right? The famous story of Jesus' birth. I'm going to read in, in, in uh, yeah, Luke 2, verse 8. It says this. That night, there were shepherds staying in the fields nearby, guarding their flocks of sheep. Suddenly, now you got to understand, most of the time, suddenly uh, would be scary, right? And this is how they respond. Suddenly, an angel of the Lord appeared among them, and the radiance of the Lord's glory surrounded them, and they were terrified. Makes sense, okay? That's a, like, <laughs> whoa. You know, it's pitch black all of a sudden, boom. There's like angels there, and it's like, anyway. They were scared. They were terrified. Uh, but the angel reassured them and said, don't be afraid. And this is where it's really good. He said, I bring you good news that will bring what? Great joy. I bring you good news that will bring great joy to all people. He's not just talking about some. He's not just talking about a certain group or a certain people. He's saying, I am bringing this for all people. Everyone. Good news of great joy. The Savior, yes, the Messiah, the Lord has been born today in Bethlehem, the city of David. And you will recognize him by this sign. You'll find a baby wrapped snugly in strips of cloth and lying in a manger. Good news of great joy. Jesus coming to earth is absolutely incredible. and such a thing to celebrate and a thing that should be filled with joy. And how do we combat our busyness? Enjoy. What do we do with joy? We put it into other people. You know, as we go into this Christmas season, there's a lot of people who are really struggling this Christmas. There's a lot of people who are dealing with grief. They're dealing with loss. They're dealing with financial ruin. They're dealing with so many things this Christmas, and we don't know everyone's story. You know, even though, you know, sometimes th this, this December, you're going to get cut off on the road. It's going to happen, and I'm sorry if it's me, you know. <laughs> but how we respond to people that's how we put joy into people. Yes, there's going to be things that suck. There's going to be things that are hard. But our response is to bring joy. Good news of great joy. Let's have fun this Christmas. Let's enjoy the process. And I have three quick things that are going to help us when it comes to uh, having fun this Christmas. Number one is start fun traditions. How many of y'all's Christmas traditions sometimes are just like, you, they're kind of boring, you know? They're like, it's not like they're bad. Like, it's not like, you know, this is horrible. But they're like, they're serious sometimes. But I think, have some fun this Christmas. And when we first got married and we got our dog, we, you know, those like, this is so horrible, but you know, those like, those dollar store chickens that make the most horrific noise. That was our treetop for like four years. I'm telling you. And we'd squeeze it, and our dog would try and get it, right? And then one fateful day, she got it and ruined Christmas. She stole Christmas, right? Well, let's enjoy 
you know, let's start a tradition. Start something fun. It doesn't have to be serious. Keep doing your serious ones, but have some fun. Christmas? Number two is explore our city. Last year I was a tourist in our city. Why? Because I was, I hadn't even been, lived here a year yet. So we did every single thing you do at Christmas time here in Edmonton that I, I knew of, okay? Like maybe, maybe like, you know, this like weird like niche thing that like I would love to see it. Tell me about it. But explore the city. You know, go do something in our city. Go to Candy Cane Lane if you've never done it before or if you have, do it again. You know, we went to the, I think it's the, the Canadian Tire Magic of Lights, right? It was awesome. Jane loved it, our daughter, right? She, she was like just over one. She's just like looking like in awe of how much light there was. And then we have none on our house. We should probably fix that. Some, some, some problems here, but that's okay. We're having fun this Christmas, right? Things are going to come up that we don't enjoy, and it doesn't matter. We're going to have fun. And then number three is don't let frustrations take over. Your Christmas meal might be served late. I know your uncle might be screaming at you because he's hungry, right? He's grumbling. It might be late. You know, you might be running late to a Christmas party. And how many of y'all know when you're running late, sometimes you get frustrated and you say things you wish you didn't. Don't let frustrations take over. And there's going to be things that come up that you don't expect that throw you off your schedule, and that's okay. I bet you Mary didn't really want to give birth in a barn, right? I bet you that wasn't part of her birth plan, you know. <laughs> she was sharing with her midwife, you know what my birth plan is? She's like, actually, it's going to be in a barn in a manger with animals. It's like, all right, you know, unexpected. But it's still a story we talk about today. Sometimes it's, it's so funny. If you look back at all my Christmas stories, my traditions, and I look back, sometimes the funniest moments or the best moments are when things were horrible, okay? It's like the food, the turkey, like, either wasn't cooked or was, like, too cooked, you know? And they just become these stories that you look back on and you just remember and laugh about as you remember and that you had fun those Christmases. And so the last takeaway today is, that, is this, is make joy your priority this Christmas.